Okay, folks. So uh, my name is Nicholas Backwood. Uh, I'm the program coordinator for uh, P410, which is our screenwriting and narrative design program. Uh, you will notice that as I was editing uh, this presentation, I forgot to remove the word online here. Uh, I'll explain that in a minute. We've got two parallel programs. Uh, so P400 is our, our in-person postgraduate uh, screenwriting program. Uh, so a few a couple notes for uh, for an overview. So um, as it says on our website, uh, students in the program work both individually uh, and collaboratively toward original screenplays for film, television, video game, and interactive media. Uh, something that's important to emphasize: uh, students in the program retain ownership of all of their work. Uh, and while it is entirely possible for someone to go through the program thinking of the work they're doing as assignments, uh, I encourage everyone to just think of it as, as their own live projects, which potentially at least they, they are. Uh, so P400 is an in-person program, uh, which in, in a normal year is hosted at our uh, 230 Richmond campus. Uh, while we have a new twin program, which is P410, uh, which is entirely online. Uh, one of the few, I suppose, plus sides of, of all of the upset of this last year is that we've got to spend this last year figuring out how to run the program online, <laughs> something we had been thinking of doing uh, and we're working towards and life threw us the um, necessity of doing a, be a beta test. So it's worked fantastically. So P400 is our in-person program. P410 is our online program. Uh, through the course of the year, students complete a slate of original work as they prepare for a career in entertainment writing. Uh, let's see, so uh, basics of the program. Uh, we run the program, well, we have one intake for the program per year, and that is in September. The program is organized over three terms, so fall, winter, and then spring, summer. So you're working from September through to August of the following year. Two of those terms, fall and winter, are primarily directed toward uh, coursework, so paired courses in writing for television, writing for film, uh, writing for interactive media and video game, business courses, uh, more, more overarching non-media specific courses in entertainment writing, and our studio uh, and intensive courses. And there's details about all of those on the website. Uh, the program accepts both domestic and international students. Uh, something I should emphasize for P410, the online program, as it is entirely online, uh, it doesn't require a visa and can be taken from anywhere in the world. So admission requirements. Um, applicants, as this is a postgraduate program, uh, for academic requirements, we're after a degree, uh, a diploma, or a postgraduate certificate. So uh, someone coming in without those would need to have uh, uh, substantial industry experience of some kind. Uh, and that sorry, is... Nicholas, you're a little low. Oh, sorry. Oh, dear. Okay. Grr. You know, I've just noticed there's a, someone was telling me I was, I was a little quiet in class yesterday, too. I'm not sure what's going on with this microphone. Ah, thank you. Okay. Am I a little better now? Hopefully. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so for folks um, applying without a degree or a diploma or postgraduate certificates, uh, we'll ask for a resume with with some kind of industry experience. Uh, bum, bum, bum. Yes. So, oh, I was trying to go back there for a second. Um, something important, as this there was a bit of a thumb wrestle early in the early days of the program. Uh, if you're applying with a degree or a diploma, we're not looking for a specific degree. Uh, if you arrive with a background, say in English literature, that's fantastic. But um, someone with a background in engineering uh, might also be a fantastic storyteller. Um, mathematics, you name it. So any degree, any diploma, any postgraduate certificate, and beyond that, um, uh, uh, relevant industry experience. So success in the program. And you will see I'm breaking my own rules about setting up PowerPoints. <laughs> so this is a lot, this is quite a bit, this is quite wordy, uh, but it's because I want to emphasize some things and don't want to forget them. So I'll just read this. Prospective students sometimes think of screenwriting programs as a foot in the door to the industry, and they certainly can be, uh, but having contact with a number of such programs myself over the years, um, uh, some of them uh, may, may oversell that relationship. 
we're a writing program. This is an entertainment writing program. It's not an agency. We don't represent people. Um, but with that said, uh, we include business courses, so, and courses in the business of show, so that um, uh, guarding your intellectual property, uh, your copyright, um, looking for representation, uh, running a small business, uh, applying for grants, the stuff you actually potentially need to know about what to do, depending on what, what your career ambitions are. Alongside that, uh, we uh, use a work integrated learning approach, which is to say uh, our writer's room, we run as a writer's room. So it's for folks working collaboratively, workshopping their own work or work they're working on with other people. So it's primarily giving notes and taking notes. That's, that's the heart of the program. So it is inherently social and about communication and about building a sense of trust in a room and learning to work collaboratively. Uh, ba -ba -bum. And this, this, as you work towards preparing a slate of original work. Um, so a, a slate uh, is those works which you have available to present to industry, whether that's a, a studio, an agent, uh, or and the work that you have in progress. Um, and for anyone curious, I'm happy to send you uh, our booklet that we produce annually to give you a sense of what graduates um, typically produce over the course of the year and head out into industry with. So a typical year includes students with a diverse background, ranging from film and television production, acting, marketing, and publishing. Uh, while this is a full-time program, and it does involve a large commitment of your time, uh, it's not unusual for, for folks to have a job uh, and to be working full-time at the same time. So we attempt to take that into account as we do our scheduling. Um, so the coursework itself, uh, students will need a computer capable of running uh, industry standard screenwriting software, that's final draft, and presentation software, that's, that's PowerPoint, which we're attempting to model right now. <laughs> uh, so you don't need the fanciest of computers, but you do need a computer that will allow you to, um, uh, to run industry standard software. For those folks in the online version of the program, you're also going to need a reliable high-speed internet connection, because uh, we're... Uh, the well because it's an online program uh, so zoom again is industry standard so that's what we use uh, alongside the occasional bespoke software like netflix's uh, teleparty which allows us to uh, work with um, copyrighted work in a way that is um, censorship uh, pardon me censorship sensitive to uh, the ownership of that ip uh, some sample uh, career uh, paths for folks uh, in entertainment writing include script writing, producing, um, working as a staff writer, that would be for traditional um, uh, television production, particularly comedy writing, um, editing, story editing, uh, showrunner, uh, narrative design, and of course, freelance writing. So career exploration, additional program highlights. Uh, all of our faculty, uh, this is what we call our, our dual learning model at George Brown College. All our faculty are active in Toronto's film, television, and video game industries. Uh, these include uh, writers, producers, and directors. Uh, our graduates have gone on to work as staff writers, uh, video game writers, and have secured grants and fellowships from a variety of sources. I've given you some examples here, the Ontario Arts Council, Women on Screen, Ontario Creates, um, etc. Uh, oh, and uh, Mitch LeBlanc, um, uh, a graduate, well, uh, won read its screenwriting award in 2017 uh, for a project which is in development uh, in Los Angeles at the moment, which is kind of fantastic. And that I think, right, gives us our next step. So um, we are still accepting applicants for September 20, uh, 2021, and that's for both P400, the in-person program, and P410, which is the online program. Uh, to apply. Once you apply through OCAS and they forward the application to college admissions, college admissions takes a look at your qualifications. That's for folks applying with a degree, a diploma, or postgraduate certificate. And once they have vetted those, they let us know and they send out uh, a request for a writing portfolio. Uh, we typically ask for at least two pieces of work uh, with at least one in uh, master screenplay format Though for people applying with a background in interactive writing, it's usually going to be some other other format, say Twine, for example, or um, well, the, the 
does a number of them, uh, other plugins for Unity, et cetera. Uh, so we're also after a current resume, um, and but the thumb, no, well, there you go. I just anticipated it. So a, a, a portfolio of writing samples, typically including work in screenplay format. Though we've had people arrive with a background in uh, ch children's literature, comic book writing, um, uh, copywriting. Um, we had someone whose background was as a, uh, a who uh, developed copy for television advertising in Italy and France, so, uh, or a playwright from Nigeria. So lots of different backgrounds. And I think that's it, right. So there, there we are again, there's my email address. And again, I'm, I'm Nicholas, uh, and thank you very much. <laughs> I'm looking meaningfully at Fiata. Sorry, do we have any questions? I thought I was speaking. <laughs> <laughs> I, I keep muting myself just so you can present. But if we have any questions, please use the Q&A portion here and we'll be able to answer them. Um, this is Nicholas's contact, um, as he has said, and we do have the contact for the live chat there where we have our chair and our student um, like coordinator there as well. And she has more information with like how applications go and how you get accepted and so on and so forth. So do you guys have any questions? That was a pretty quick presentation. I think that was one of the fastest ones. Oh, boy. well, we just, uh, Ramon and I both gave similar presentations to uh, other bits of the college a couple of weeks ago, so. Yeah. Uh, How'd that go? Oh, that's just... oh, it was great. That was with um, Cindy from marketing. Okay. It was lovely. And... It was nice. <laughs> and you guys have your own room um for writing it's called you know if you want to elaborate on that oh my goodness so we we so this is at uh 230 richmond um yes. which is our our, <laughs> our media <laughs> campus which i remember from such years as last year a year ago <laughs> <laughs> and haven't seen for a while uh we have our, our writer studio uh downstairs uh next to the folks in vis the visual effects okay. program and our sound design program, those are both um, uh, uh, two, two more postgraduate programs that we Correct, collaborate yeah. with. Um, we've done a lot of collaboration with the folks in our game design program. They're at a different campus, but uh, uh, we, let's see, who else is in that building? Um, um, the actors are in that building, the, the actors from media. Jeez. Um, uh, Video design. I'm in that building. <laughs> <laughs> You're in that building. <laughs> Yeah. It's been so long. That's crazy. I remember George, George's diner is next door. Hopefully it'll <laughs> still be there. They have really- We have a new coffee shop. We have a new coffee shop. <laughs> is Mystic Muffin still going? I hope. I don't, <laughs> uh, oh I don't know. I'm going crazy. I don't know about anyone else on the chat, but that's. Uh, How's everyone doing with the new COVID restrictions? Do you have any questions? Like, you know, we're, we're, we're cool people. We can talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, it does. It does help if you're a little giggly <laughs> to get through the George Brown experience. Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Ramon made sure to tell everyone that he was an avid um, Hufflepuff. That he was oh, my goodness. Oh, okay. Yes, he told we, everyone that he was Hufflepuff. I was we have a lot of Hufflepuff. <laughs> I'm Hufflepuff. In the house. Indeed, yes. Yes. And Lee's, Lee's is Hufflepuff. Lee's is Hufflepuff. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot oh, of wow. Hufflepuff. It's a Hufflepuff place. A, <laughs> uh, our version of Dumbledore, uh, it's Trent Shearer, is, yes. is very, very Ravenclaw. Very Ravenclaw. Very, very, very organized. <laughs> <laughs> And let's see, our acting for media, that's Anna Mackay Smith. And she's, she's, I think she's very Gryffindor. That's my feeling. She's Gryffindor. Yeah, I think so. Excellent. No one has any questions? <laughs> We've answered all your questions and stuff. No one has anything to add? Oh, some, oh, oh we do have a question. Oh, good. <laughs> Can you see? Uh, oh, there it is. Yeah. Are the, are, the, are the markets saturated with screenwriters? Since the market for content is not very fragmented, more and more different things are coming out. Becoming a screenwriter seems to not be a big dream anymore. I feel like we can be hard laborers and create content. 
Well, that is a huge question. Um, uh, I, I agree with you. Look, as you can tell from the gray beard, I'm a bit older. When I got started, it was through a fellow named Moses Neimer, uh, who founded City TV way back in the 1970s. Uh, and when I started my career in the early 90s, it was all cable television. And that seemed enormously exciting at the time, and, and it was. Uh, because prior to that, there'd only been three networks plus public television in Canada, and it was the same in the United States. So uh, as a friend of mine put it, uh, it used to be if you pitched a show, whether it was half hour series comedy, one hour series drama in Canada, if you went to Global, you went to CTV, you went to CBC and they didn't like it, then you had to go away and come up with something else. That, that, those were your options. Um, as you say, um, with narrow casting and what's called OTT, that's uh, over the top streaming services, uh, there's far more production money than there used to be. And uh, there are far, far more alternatives than there used to be. Um, yeah, so, so that is the hope. Obviously it's a changing media landscape. So we try and, and make our best guess alongside our um, uh, industry advisory committee who are fantastic and very sympathetic and well-connected and making their own best guesses as well. Uh, I see another question. Um, as someone wishing to pursue theater, would you recommend this program in order to get into writing plays? Uh, this, uh, the, the short answer is, uh, well, let's say that there could be a short answer, which is yes, and a short answer, which is no. Um, we do have people arrive with a theater background, which is, to my mind, fantastic. They'll have a different sense about um, blocking space, um, and, and they're, they're fantastic writers. Uh, but ultimately, as, as this is an entertainment writing program directed at film and television and interactive, we don't have uh, any courses that are specific to playwriting. Um, so I'm, I got to say that's, it's my sister and my mom who are, who are the theatrical folks. If you send me an email, I'll, 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 I'll ask around because uh, we have some very clever people who'd be able to make a more specific suggestion. Uh, when that, we, sorry to cut you, but when we had our theater teacher, um, coordinator Sue, Sue also said that um, the theater program kind of preps you for that, but not in a direct way as how the screenwriting would um, prepare you to write. So there are resources. So if you did enter the screenwriting program, which would be really amazing, we could also see about like getting you some type of guidance from Sue because Sue would be the person to um, speak to about the theater preparation for something like that, especially when we have the intensive and so on. Right, okay, that's... That's right. I should have thought of that myself. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Fiona. I've sat through all the presentations, so I have a little okay. <laughs> knowledge here. <laughs> yeah. Sue would be one of the people I'd, I'd ask for um, uh, specific suggestions, and that's a great one. Look, we do have people whose thesis work uh, ends up veering away from, uh, say, serious television comedy is one of the one of the, the, the most popular things people are looking for from our program. But we've had people who've done thesis work as graphic novels, as a um, uh, video game, as, what's the third one? Oh, just novels. We've had, we've had three novelists come through the program. So it would be very interesting to have someone come through with a specific interest in, in writing for, um, for theater. Uh, but we would need to ask for some guidance. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Let's see. Have you pitched anything recently? <laughs> oh, we have one more question here. Oh, super. So have you pitched anything recently? Do you have any aspirations to create film TV? Or are you more focused on educating young screenwriters? Uh, oh, well, thank you very much. It's a very nice question. Um, I wrote a short book last year that I pitched to one market that I had in mind for it and they were not interested. And I'm afraid I've, I, I think with COVID, uh, I just, I haven't quite decided what else I would like to do with it at this point. Um, that was the first thing that I wrote uh, without a specific client in mind for a very long time. So it was, it was a very good experience for me. But for the most part, uh, while I came out of uh, writing for television, writing for interactive, uh, I've been with the college now since 2008, 
uh, running the narrative design component for our game design program uh, and coordinating the screenwriting program for the last five years. Uh, so at, at, at the moment, I'm mostly trying to help other people starting out uh, avoid the avoid learning things the hard way, which is has been my <laughs> has been my my way of doing things for thirty years. Well, thank you. It's a lovely question. Do we have any more questions? Again, just want to point out that there is a link in the chat of the the Zoom meeting that will take you to a live chat portion or chairs there and our student coordinator. And we have someone there from the theater program as well. So they will be able to help you through any questions that you have that we didn't answer or you didn't think of right now. I don't know if it goes past 1 p.m. though. So, yeah. Are we allowed to go over and, and say hi to them? <laughs> <laughs> we can. Okay. Um, Kia did. Kia went over to answer some more um, answers from work for the dance program. So she was there for a while. Okay. I, I might just go over and say hi. You know, yeah. Nice. Yeah. So we do have a bunch of other resources available. My internet is unstable. Sorry, I think the frozen thing happened with my internet just now. I'm so sorry. Oh no, <laughs> I can hear you. Okay. You are most welcome, Jonathan. <laughs> he hey, said, thank you. you for your time. Greatly appreciated. Oh, thank you, Jonathan. Lovely. Um, do we have any more questions? I've put my email address uh, in the chat. Oh, yes. Uh, and uh, please do reach out if you have any specific questions about the program or general questions about the program. Uh, one small caveat, this is our last week of term coming up and I've got a lot of grading to do <laughs> in the few days after that. So my, uh, my response time on email will be a little slow for the next couple of weeks, but I'd love to hear from you if you have any questions. We will be signing off in about uh, six minutes because we yeah. do kind of end the open house, the virtual open house at 1230. Um, but if you guys have any other questions or you just wanna stick around, just talk with us. <laughs> I think that's okay too. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I'm trying to think of other, other stuff I would have included if I'd done a longer version of the presentation. Um, the screenwriting program is like, you, know, you guys, and we do work with the capstones, right? Or you know? Uh, so uh, we set up, yeah, that, okay. So this, this is, uh, the short answer is no. It took a long time to figure out. Yeah, our, our schedule for, for the post program doesn't quite line up with the, um, um, with the diploma programs, but we do collaborate with the other programs right. um, through the course of the year uh, uh, through our studio class. So this is a screenwriting studio class in the fall. Uh, the new writers uh, get to know the new visual effects students who pitch a number of projects for short films, mm -hmm. uh, which we then sort of kick around uh, for the last, let's see, we, we green, we've greenlit two short films over the last, so last year and the year before. So uh, the writers go through an iterative process of creating scripts for those shorts right. on, alongside the VFX folks. Uh, those then get handed over to um, students from video design and the acting for media program. Yes. Uh, they, those then get shot usually end of November into December. Uh, then everything gets handed over to visual effects for their winter term courses uh, as they're working on, on uh, doing doing their their magic. Yes. <laughs> uh, and then it goes over to sound design through the summer. Uh, right. So it's a very collaborative um, program because we do work with everyone in that building you will get to integrate with actors and everything. It's, it's awesome. <laughs>